am Gloria Bailey Ray. I'm the producer and host of one of the hottest shows on Coffee TV, You Didn't Get the Memo. And today, I wanna to talk to all of you about something that we either know a family member, we know of a friend, we know of someone who has been affected by domestic violence. In fact, between 960,000 and 3 million incidents of domestic violence is reported every year. I mean, three million, think about that. While many other incidents actually go unreported, it is estimated that about 10 million people experience domestic violence in the United States each year alone. The Bureau of Justice Statistics says that an average of about 716 thousand instances of non-fatal domestic violence were reported to police each year and about 582,000 instances were unreported. 582,000 instances unreported. More than half of all domestic violence victimizations, 56% were reported to police with reporting rates similar for intimate partner violence and violence committed by other relatives. Guys, this is something that is serious. It is something that has touched so many people that I know and so many friends' lives. Police responded to 64% of all domestic violence reports within 10 minutes, and they say that they took a report at the scene about 78% of the time. Charges were filed in 39% of reported cases with a higher arrest rate when a complaint was signed and when there was serious injury. But among victims who didn't report the abuse, about a third made the choice for the sake of privacy. 21% were protecting the perpetrator and 20% felt the crime was minor and 10% feared repercussions. Female victims were four times as likely as male victims to forego reporting because they feared retaliation. We have got to do better. Domestic violence. Listen, every nine seconds in the U.S. a woman is assaulted or beaten. Around the world, at least one in every three women has been beaten, coerced into sex, or otherwise abused during her lifetime. Most often, the abuser is a member of her own family. Domestic violence is the leading cause of injury to women, more than car accidents, muggings, and rapes combined. Studies suggest that up to 10 million children have witnessed some form of domestic violence annually. Nearly one in five teenage girls who have been in a relationship said a boyfriend threatened violence or self-harm if they were presented with a breakup. Every day in the U.S., more than three women are murdered by their husbands or boyfriends. 92% of women surveyed listed reducing domestic violence and sexual assault as their top concern. Domestic violence victims lose nearly 8 million days of paid work per year in the U.S. alone. That's the equivalent of 32,000 full-time jobs. Based on reports from 10 countries, between 55 and 95% of women who have been physically abused by their partners They've never contacted a non-governmental organization, shelter, or the police for help. The cost of intimate partner violence in the U.S. alone exceeds $5.8 billion every year. $4.1 billion are for direct medical and health care services, while productivity losses account for nearly $1.8 billion. Men who as children witnessed their parents' domestic violence were twice as likely to abuse their own wives than sons of nonviolent parents. This is a serious issue, domestic violence. When we return, 
we're going to be talking with someone who is the executive director of a women's shelter, domestic violence shelter. So don't go anywhere, stay right there. We'll be right back. Queen is just my everything. His smile did it. His smile, his eyes, his knowledge. My landlord, he decided that he wanted me to move based on the fact that I was transgender. Let's just respect people in everyday life for just being human. They say you don't have to be so strong, but this is my mother, my purpose. Strength is not optional. See, I lift her now like she raised me then, so I know my strength is super, but I'm still human. Oh, well, look who's here. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. <laughs> Hi, welcome to You Didn't Get the Memo. I'm Gloria Villarie, your host, and as always, we have an exciting show, and it's quite informational today. So you wanna grab your family and friends and get around the tube. But let me tell you this, You Didn't Get the Memo is about providing you, the viewer, with relevant, factual, mainstream information to help you be informed and to make informed decisions. Our guest today is Ms. Sephora Atchison, who is the Executive Director of Ruby place and you're probably wondering what's Ruby's place we're going to tell you all about that but I want to welcome you so much to the studio thank you so much for being here thank you for having me I'm very excited yeah it is um, I had the pleasure of actually meeting someone that works with you yes. and they were telling me about Ruby's place and I did some research and I thought we've got to have these people on the show. We've got to talk about what Ruby's Place is. Yeah. And so I'm going to start with, first of all, mm -hmm. just asking you to tell us a little bit about your background, because it's, it's interesting, but yet it's not interesting. It makes sense how you fell into come to be a part and become yeah. the executive director at Ruby's Place. Yes. Well, this year I'll be there for 10 years total. Really? Um, I spent most of my time at Ruby's Place as the director of programs, really building up the different services that we provide, helping to grow the organization. Um, in May 2018, um, we did a really elaborate strategic plan, um, which we'll tell you about in a little bit, a great okay. project that we have going on. Um, and there was an opportunity for me to step into the executive director role. Um, so I took that. My background is, as you said, pretty typical. <laughs> um, I got my master's degree in counseling, um, specifically marriage and family therapy, and mm -hmm. recently um, completed my internship. So I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Congratulations. Which, thank you very much, which is pretty fitting for this field. Hi. Hi. Um, I think that it gives me a really unique perspective. Mm -hmm. um, in sitting in the administrative world of nonprofit and what we do and keeping me connected to the clients. Okay, so that's a great lead in to mm -hmm. what you do. What is Ruby's Place? Oh goodness, that's a lovely question. Um, so <laughs> Ruby's Place is California's first incorporated domestic violence shelter ever. So we were founded in 1972. Mm -hmm. It was by a group of women who really at that time um, were part of the battered women's movement as mm -hmm. they called it and um, came together it was a church group and said, you know, we need a safe place for women to go who are experiencing um, domestic violence. And so they opened up a very small eight bed home um, which has now grown to be a 42 bed shelter for yeah. women and children. Um, so that's really our flagship program and, mm -hmm. and what we're founded on. We now have two shelters. Um, we have a very robust outreach program that provides community education. Um, we partner with uh, the FBI. We partner with different hospitals and oh, okay. providing 
um, education to those first responders. Mm -hmm. And then most recently, we have a full dynamic housing program. So we're actually able to provide um, permanent supportive housing to those folks that are moving out of our shelters. Wow, yeah, uh, just the, just listening to you talk about, and I didn't realize that you have two locations. We do have two locations. Uh, because I know there is one, and so now you've expanded to two, we have. Which, which says, I think that that says a lot, the fact that you're doing that type of expansion. Yes. But it's such needed work too, it as is. you know, right? It really is. Un unfortunately, we say it that, um, you know, domestic abuse and and human tra and human trafficking. You know, human day slavery is is unfortunately keeping us in business. Right. Um, it's a hard topic to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really um, still happening every day in our community. Um, the Bay Area, particularly right. Oakland is a hub for human trafficking mm -hmm. um, in the United States and even the world. Right. We're leading in that. And that's not a great statistic, not something that we wanna be proud of. Um, but one thing that we can right. say is that the community has really wrapped their arms around trying to solve this problem. Right, right. and, it, and it, it, in many cases, a lot of these young girls that are caught up in human trafficking, mm -hmm. they don't even realize that somebody yes. that's nice to them, yes. right? Absolutely. And, um, they get sucked in. Yes. And a lot of them don't know how to get out. Right. And this is where I see what Ruby's Place mm -hmm. does is to help them and help them in their decision making process. Right. Because everybody that seems like it, they're nice, they're not. Right. Right? All the Uncle Johns and Uncle Johnnies, mm -hmm. they really are not. Right. And we've come to know that as something safe mm -hmm. and, um, you know, making sure that they are aware, right? right? Um, and that's really something, so, yes. uh, but yeah, I, I, the work that you're doing, invaluable, invaluable. Thank so you. let me switch gears for uh, a yes. minute. You uh, kind of led into this, the type of people that you work with. Mm -hmm. We're yes. talking about human trafficking, we're talking yes. about domestic violence, yes. um, and I don't know what those numbers look like mm -hmm. in terms of what your intake is. Yes. But are you able to speak to any of that? I am, yes. Okay. So at our women's shelter, um, we have about 350 women and children that come through that shelter program per wow. year. Mm -hmm. um, our housing program, which is rather new, um, we've, we've housed about 100 people so far, and that's mm -hmm. within less than a year's time frame. Mm -hmm. Um, and then our outreach program is, is within the thousands. Um, total, uh, we serve over 5,000 people a year through all of our programs, including our crisis line. Wow. Yes. That's a lot. It is. Okay, that's a lot. So you offer Merida services to clients. Yes. Uh, let's talk about a few of them. Yes. All right. So at our shelter, if you come to live there, we provide you everything that you would need to live. So that's the basic things. We have food, we have all the hygiene products, your bedding, and then you have access to our on-site case managers. So they're really the ones that are gonna sit down with you and meet you where you're at. What's mm -hmm. going on? Do you need education services? Is it medical? Is it dental? Do we need to get a restraining order? Do we need to go to court with you? Mm -hmm. So they're really the person that's gonna stand by you that's going to be your advocate and really walk you through the next couple of stages while you're in the shelter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we also have an on-site clinician so whether that's the immediate crisis counseling that they need or if they're interested in the longer term therapy it may be family therapy reconnecting with family that they've lost connection to mm. um, and then we have our shelter advocates so they're on site 24 hours a day 365 days a year. Those are those face-to-face -face people to say, if you're um, you know, having an anxiety attack, if you just need somebody to mm -hmm. talk to you at three o'clock in the morning, right. they're there for them. Um, so those are our shelter, that's really what our shelter service are, are comprised of. Mm -hmm. We also have our crisis line. That's 24 hours a day, 365 <laughs> days a year okay. as well. Um, anybody can call in who may be experiencing mm -hmm. and just want to say, um, 
you know, I need help. It may be that they're not sure if they need help. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. anonymous. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have to disclose anything to us. And then as I mentioned earlier, we have our newer programs, which is outreach. We have two case managers that can provide uh, case management and advocacy services to anybody who may not be ready to come into the shelter, mm -hmm. but really want to seek services. Mm -hmm. And then we also provide education to those first responders in the community about domestic violence right. and human trafficking. Right, um, which all of those things are really key. When I read that, the whole piece about court accommodations, yes. Yes. I'm like, whoa, restraining order services. Yes. And I would imagine, as you said, sometimes people aren't quite sure what they need right. until they get in front of you and really you know you start to kind of ferret out all of those different yes. things and they're not quite for sure right. because the one thing that I know uh, that women of domestic violence even though they feel like that I've gotten past this mm -hmm. there could be something that could trigger it yes. that caused them to relapse it could be the sound of someone's raised voice. It yes. could be the yelling. It could, th there could actually be a somebody wearing a black hoodie. I mean, really, right. anything, absolutely anything can trigger them. Mm -hmm. And it is a long road to healing. Yeah. Um, statistically, somebody leaves their abuser seven times before they leave for the last time. So at Ruby's place, we are open arms. We are not there to judge. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter how many times we've seen you. You walk through that door and we'll sit down with you and talk to you about, okay, what's going on with you today? Mm -hmm. And human trafficking, the statistics wow. are even higher. Yeah. It's up into you know, 14, 20 times that they would leave their trafficker before they, they leave for the last yeah. time. It's hard to break away, you know? It is, it's, it's a, hard, a hard thing to wrap your mind around. Right, it really is. Um, Sephora, so when we return, we're going to talk about uh, Ruby's Place opening uh, the first California shelter for men. Yes. Right? Yes. So if you hang on, when we come back, we're going to talk about that. Great. Okay? Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Finder. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. So we're back with Ms. Sephora Atchison, who is the executive director of Ruby's Place. And we've been talking about all of the services that Ruby's Place offers for women who are victims of domestic violence, uh, human trafficking. Yes. But Ruby's Place actually has a different spin also. Yes. You recently opened the first men's shelter we did. In, in California. Talk we a little did. bit about that. So that was a very exciting branch out for us. Okay. So as we um, really implemented the services for women mm -hmm. and women who have children who are experiencing um, human trafficking, the need for men um, to have shelter uh, who were trafficked it was like the floodgates opened. Right. Um, and we said, okay, we <laughs> right. have to do something about this. Um, you know, Ruby's Place serves everybody. So let's look for a residential um, place that we can actually house these people. Mm -hmm. um, so we opened up actually the United States first wow. men's shelter um, for those who are experiencing human trafficking. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually very shocking to us that there wasn't another one in the United States. Um, I mean, it saddens us. We hope that there's other people that want to join in and say, this is a really big need. Um, mm -hmm. Let's open up more of these. Um, it's a six bed shelter. It's small, but it's mighty. Right. Um, we just put one of the first men that went through our program into permanent housing. He's doing really well. Awesome. Um, so we're excited about expanding that program and, and telling more of the community about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's six beds today, but 60 yes. beds, you know, yes. in six months from now, because <laughs> yes. it is, that's one of the things. And I do want to say this, 
that although we're talking about uh, domestic violence with women, there are also men yes, who are. are victims of domestic violence. There and it's are. just because they're men, they don't talk about it, it's not right. talked about, they don't come, they're not as forthcoming Correct. as maybe women are, yes. but we also need to recognize, and I wanna give a shout out to definitely say that we're here, yes. we're talking about Ruby's Place, but there are men who are also dealing Absolutely. with uh, domestic violence, as well as, as you pointed out, the fact of human trafficking. Yes. These young boys, that is that is so big. It is. So it is. kudos to Ruby's Place for having that, you know, that vision of recognizing we need to do something for our men as well. Yes. Kudos to you for that. Thank you. That's huge. So I'll look to see and hear from you uh, as you continue to expand yeah. and uh, have, a, you know, a larger bed capacity yes. to take these individuals in. Yes. So I guess I would say get ready, put your hat on. Yes. And I'll come you down. back in a, in a couple <laughs> years and tell you about how big we are. Yeah. Well, oh. probably less than that because yeah. if this is the only place in the United States that yes. has this, I would venture to say it's really going to grow yes you know so Agreed. um congratulations Thank to you, you on on that um we're going to take a uh beef a brief break and when we come back we're going to talk about some of the things that ruby has a wish list yes. for right yes. okay so we'll be right back okay oh sweetie okay you know what let's let's take off his sweatshirt Get rid of pictures of him. You don't have to look at him. Goodbye, Dave. Mom, you don't understand. He's tagged in like 400 of my posts. I can cut out tags. No, that's, that's not how it works. What is a tag? <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care would love to share their first with you. Well, thank you. If you're just tuning in, we have here the executive director, Ms. Sephora Atchison from Ruby's Place. And um, Ms. Sephora has yeah. been talking about all the services that Ruby's Place provides for domestic violence victims as well as human traffic victims. But you're a 501c3. We are nonprofit. Nonprofit. And guess what? You need funding. <laughs> We need all the things, Gloria. <laughs> right. uh, and in addition to that, though, you have a wish list of we things do. that people can also donate. So yes. what are some of those uh, big ticket items that you guys would love to have people donate to Ruby's Place? So the top one on the list that my staff is always asking me for is size four and five diapers. So we have a lot of little ones, Okay. typically 20 to 25 little ones at a time. Wow. And size four to five diapers are like a hot commodity. Okay. So that would be great. Um, twin sheets are also another really big thing with the amount of beds that we have. Um, they're all twin size, so that's something that we go through very quickly. And then probably something more typical for a shelter is canned food. Okay. So um, anything canned, anything non-perishable, mac and cheese, peanut butter cereal, um, that really helps us out a lot to make sure that we keep those cupboards stocked for our clients. Okay. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to say to our viewers, you heard what the list is, yes. but they can actually go onto your website, which they is rubiesplace.org. Okay, and find that list of, of items and to donate. Right. Um, you know, there we definitely want people to be able to do that. Yes. Um, and in fact, on the screen, the viewers uh, are seeing your website. And I don't um, know if there's a phone number that there you're able is. to give out. There is. Our administrative number okay. is 510-581-5626. Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, folks can call and ask if they can donate or drop off um, if they want to get more information about us. Mm -hmm. And then our crisis line, which is 24 hours a day for anybody who needs help, is 510 786 
one two four six okay all right so um, I'm going this is my call to action to the viewers mm -hmm. is to get busy yes right <laughs> get busy and to donate these items I always say if you go in the grocery store and you pick out a can of something yes. pick out an extra can exactly. and just put it aside and say this is what I'm going to donate yes. because it takes everyone involved it, does. it takes a and, village um, it's what you're doing is such important work Thank it you. is such such important work. You've also told the viewers where when they call, they can find out where they can drop off uh, these items to uh, as well. But here's the question I have for you. What do you want the viewers uh, to take away uh, and to know? Something that maybe I've not touched on or highlighted about Ruby's Place. Hmm. Ruby's Place is a very dedicated, determined agency to solve a really big problem. Okay. Um, and we need the community's help for that. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a volunteering, a donation, like you said, simply buying an extra can of food, mm -hmm. um, giving us a call and seeing how they can help. We really need the community's involvement in that. Um, okay. And we're happy to provide that education and, and bring people in. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank uh, you for being on the thank show. You. You've enlightened us. You've given us a lot of great information. And I learned something about Ruby's Place. And um, I know that I'm getting my bag together mm -hmm. to donate some things. Thank and I you. hope that the viewers will do the same. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for, for being here um, on the show. I want to say to our viewers that uh, you've heard some really, really key information and there's someone out there that you know who may be suffering uh, in silence but you see the signs, you know the signs. You can encourage them to get in touch with Ruby's Place the number is on your screen, the website is on your screen. Please encourage them to take care of themselves and to get help. That's what I would say. But also, I wanna just tell you that if you didn't take anything away from today's show, then it's you who didn't get the memo. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. I'm also on YouTube as well. But more importantly, set that DVR to watch the show every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. on Coffee TV. We're all over, over 7 million households, so you don't want to be the one that's left out. I always like to leave you with a positive message, and that message is the quality of your life is determined by the decisions that you make. I'm Gloria Bailey Ray, your host. Thank you again for tuning in. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Calway Solutions. Until this time next Sunday, be well, be blessed, peace out. around and hold conversation with somebody you don't